Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family. We chose this one. This is episode number 273, Life in the Fast Lane, minute 80. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. And I sound like I'm in an underground submarine or something because I was stranded in Texas. We'll get to this in the extracurricular activities, yeah. but I do not have my normal recording equipment, so I apologize for this. But here we are. We The show must go on, Joe, right? Just like the greatest showman said, maybe, I don't know. The show must go on. A different podcast, of course. I have no idea. Say that? Probably not, but maybe. Okay. Yeah, perhaps. I know they say that they say this is the greatest show. I know that. (laughs) They do over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. But we are here. We will get to extracurricular activities first. But first off, want to give a very special shout out to our patrons: Cassie Wilson, Ben Milliman, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleiman, Brian Rodriguez of High School Slumber Party. Haley Gerbys, West Hampton, Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden, Renato D. Donato, Michael McGann, Lane Middleton, Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton of the Kings of Sport, Jason Rainey, Tom Price, Mike Gallier, and Jessica Collins, a.k.a. Montez. Montez. Thank you all so much for supporting us at the $5 a month level or above. Uh, if you want to join the, the ranks of those fine, fine folk, go to TooFast2Forever.com, get some bonus episodes, get your name in these credits. Get swag and merchandise and our undying love and affection at TooFast2Forever.com. Or if you don't want to do that, you can email us at family at cageclub. I mean, Joe, we got a we got a, a fairly substantial inbox today, mostly YouTube comments. Are you ready? Santa's Santa's sack is overflowing. Santa's sack, I guess, is overflowing. I guess that's how it goes. I don't know. There's a lot of, you know, it's the YouTube comments thing. It's it's a mixed bag, as always, right? Like, it's sometimes yep. this is fun. Sometimes people get mad at us. Let's find out. First off on Vanishing Points. Not this is in Spanish. Oh, Not, well, no, I don't know actually what this says. Latin Americans want the film in Latin Spanish. Four minutes, two seconds. Okay. That's not, that's not the worst comment we've got. It's not the worst comment we've got. It's not the best comment we've got. I don't know what they're actually... I know what they're asking for. I don't know what they want us to do about it. Um, I don't know either, man. We got one on Fast 5, lap 12, which is episode 267, so the Fast 5 episode from this lap. And okay. it's a, a, the letter P, then a backwards R, then an O, then a little script M, then another capital O with a different font, then an S with a little thing, curly Q thing at the bottom, and then a lowercase M. I don't know what that is either, but Antonio Santiago, thank you so much for, for watching. Pornsome? Prom, promsome. Proms, promism, promosome, promos, don't know. Promises? I don't know. We got one from Colin Rusek on Gone in 60 Seconds, the original. Colin simply says, great movie. Not wrong. Excellent. Well, very good. Okay, that's a good one. I'll, I'll chalk that in a good column. We got another one on Vanishing Point from Mark R. Taylor. He's got a cowboy hat, Joe. What do you think he thinks of this video? That we're two motor mouths. <laughs> and that Even he, simpler he than just that? wants the video. Just two words, two simple words, clickbait. We're clickbait? Yeah. I think people people assume that we're putting fake videos on YouTube to get clicks. Like we're like advertising a movie and then it's not the movie. And so people get mad about that. But it's not that, that's not what we're doing. No, no, never. And uh, it, it the descriptions always say like yeah. podcast. Yeah. The the screenshots usually the like, title, the art, yeah. all of it, all of all it. of it is yeah. Joe, we got one on machete kills. I don't know why we got some of the YouTube comments again. None of them constructive. Uh, we got okay. one on machete kills from City Modibo. Just says. In français. So this person wants this in French. So we get a lot of requests to either translate our podcast or just the film <laughs> to another language. I don't know. Um, but that's two of those. We've never had that before. But maybe that's a new trend. Maybe that's a new bot trend. I don't know. But that works. Okay. So we need to we need to step up our Duolingo. Everybody got Kindles for Christmas apparently, and are just leaving random YouTube comments. Um, we also have three actual emails. So first up from Michael Moser, subject line, hey guys. He sent this in right after we recorded our last Life in the Fast Lane. So this is a little bit of an older email, but we have not read it yet. So hey guys from Michael Moser. What's up, Mike? How's it going, bud? 
I didn't make the Thanksgiving date. Remember, you wanted to catch up on everything by Thanksgiving. So this is December yes. 9th, so a couple of weeks after Thanksgiving. Hopefully, one day I will catch up, LOL. I have a few stories for y'all. Y'all know I'm an Uber driver. Oh, this is right. This is he was listening to the, the podcast in his Uber. While he's driving Uber. Making, yeah. Yeah. I'm an Uber driver. One rider I had was a private pilot for rich people. He told me a story about how he flew Troy Aikman to a game. When they landed, Troy to them to the game, they got to hang out. Troy gave them his beer and asked them to take him to Dwayne Johnson. He was like, no way. So they go to his room. They were let in. They hand the beer off and Dwayne gave them his tequila and they took it back to Troy. Wow. So he got to meet the rock. I guess so. I also cool. think that this is, this is, um, yeah, I don't think Michael did. I think this private pilot. No, no, did, the pilot. But, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Was but you know, this, you know, this is Joe, this is a spinoff. This is our pilot for the reaction rocket sports extravaganza. Uh, hey, I said it on Twitter. If anybody wants a Patreon sports extravaganza, I promise I will do way too much research for it, and we can have a fun time sports show, just one off or whatever. Would genuinely be fun because I would do no research. You could do the research, and I could be like, "Yeah, I I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't watch that. It's not the Yankees, not the Vikings. I didn't watch that." That's fair. Did you see that the Broncos fired Nathaniel Hackett this morning? No, I did not. That's exciting. And J.J. Watt's retiring. Oh, I know that the Broncos might call, or there's the rumor that they might call Sean Payton. This is not, we can't do this. We can't do this until we're getting, until we're getting I'm paid. not. I'm not doing it, but also, dude, Sean Payton, you know who wants <laughs> Sean Payton. It was always Jerry Jones wants Sean Payton. So back yes. to Troy mm-hmm. Aikman, that he's, if anybody's going to be like the coach, like if Sean Payton's going anywhere, it's going to Dallas, right? So probably, yeah. I don't know. Like I, Payton might go back to Denver as like you know president of football operations. I don't know. Broncos. Do we have any Broncos fans listeners? I don't. I feel like we do, but I don't know. That I can't think of any off the top of my head. I Maybe we don't. Payton. I don't think Payton wants to. He he got Omaha Productions. He does the Manning cast. He does, and that's the cushiest job imaginable. He's also going to be like I think he's like has one of the teams in the Pro Bowl this year. You know they're doing goofy fun time Pro Bowl this year too, right? What, like captains picking teams? It's that, and it's like flag football, and there's like they're doing more of the games like they did last year that was like dodgeball and shit like that. Do you ever enjoy the Pro Bowl? The the games last year was fucking a blast. Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was like dodgeball, and then they had like, you had to like make an acrobatic catch, and they like rated them. Like they made it like more like the NHL's skills competition. Huh. Interesting. That's cool because like, Historically, even when I was the watching like sucks. Red Zone for eight hours every Sunday, I always hated it. Like I always thought it was a waste of time. Because it's like nobody wants to play, nobody wants to get hurt. I get it. Like it's yeah. it's understandable. It's it's like once you like make the Pro Bowl, that's it. That's it's over, right? Like you got honored. They that should way. just they should do like a Top Gun Maverick and just play two way football on the beach. Like just have offensive defense playing at the same time. Does that happen in Top Gun Maverick? They, instead of the volleyball beach, they or like the volleyball scene on the beach, they do a football because like Tom Cruise is like, you need to work how to, you know how to learn how to play together and play offense and defense at the same time. So they play football where there's two footballs in play and That's both right. teams are on offense and defense. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yes. I mean, yeah. Fair. It's like, it's, it's a montage, but like, you know, I would, I would watch that at the Pro Bowl. Yeah. But I mean, flag football is going to be a blast too, right? Because it's like no sure. contact. Yeah, so like, like imagine Tyreek Hill playing flag, flag football. Like this is going to be amazing. Yeah. Michael goes on, I don't know if Josh, Josh Buckley of Whole Lot of Wolves, told you the story or not, but I want to tell you about his last wedding. They'd bought a lot of wine and alcohol. I was the one that had to get it for our table. The bartender got to know me very fast. So he let me go behind the bar and just grab bottles. Well, Josh told me later that his uncle asked him which one of your friends is going to be the drunk person. About the time as he's asking that, I walk up and throw bottles in the trash and grab more from behind the bar. LOL. (laughs) Hey. I'm always the drunk friend, so no need to feel bad about that if you did, and I hope that you did not. On the most recent episode of Uncle Francis's Wine Cellar, at least as we're recording this, uh, they were talking about Brian's wedding once again, and they were like, you know, Mike has a, a story about Mike's uh, about Brian's wedding. You know, we've, we've told that on here before, maybe, but we yeah. like to rehash it here. But I, I did not know until this episode, and also Brian's wife, Nicole, did not know that apparently in the groomsmen room while they were getting ready – Kyle was dancing to Genuine's pony and ripped his pants and then wore those ripped pants all night. I think, no, I think I did know this. I think Kyle told me this. Oh, I'm sure he loved telling the story. I don't, I don't think I knew this story though. 
Yeah, I think I, it sounds vaguely familiar. So there's lots of stories. Nicole like laughed and laughed and laughed at that. She's like, did he wear the pants? Did he fix the pants? She's like, no, I just wore, you know. She's like, no, I just wore them. And, and as you see, nobody noticed. Right. Yeah, exactly. I Yeah, I, I didn't even know about it until years after the fact. Exactly. I also didn't know that Michael Moser and Josh Buckley were like in real life friends. I just thought he was like a listener of that podcast that they came out, whatever. But like the fact that they're friends is cool. All right. Fam, hence, hashtag family. So on and so forth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we got an email from Lane Middleton, subject line, stuff. Okay, what's up, Lane? How's it going, bud? Because I'm going to blow your mind if no one beat me to it. Oh, I think I knew this, but I did not say it on the episode. There's a Tesla Model Y, too. What a creep. We maybe should have seen that red flag. Remember, we're talking about the Model S, the Model 3, the Model X. X he also made the Model the Y, Model so y. he's spelling, yeah, spelling sexy. So very, very cool. Yeah, that... <laughs> It's, it's so dumb. That's, like, really dumb. Mm -hmm. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, like, you're a teenage boy, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna make a car company, and the cars, the models are gonna spell out sexy, and it's gonna be so hey, cool. You're either a teenage boy or a 51-year-old South African lunatic. Yes, that too. Yeah, fair. His name might be in the title of the episode, depending on how we go in a minute. I don't know. Probably not, but maybe. We got options. Why don't you just call it, like, please link to Mast... Here's my link to Mastodon or something like that. Oh, that's pretty good, too. Yeah, okay. It's like it's like a it's like a divergent, like a, a tangent from a tangent from a tangent. But, you know, we get there in the end. Lane goes on to say, I'm loving the Montez lap. I was dying during the Fast 6 episode. He also messaged us on Facebook saying he might, it might be his favorite episode of all time. This is the one where you and Montez both picked uh, most Dom moments that were not in the movie. This is what yes. Montez brought her chaotic energy. It was just, you yes. know, it was a good episode. I was thinking about that later, and I was like, okay, like, I think that this, like, the origins of this experiment were, like, what mm -hmm. point will it break? And that was, like, the first moment that I had that I was like, oh, yeah, like, that that definitely broke. Like, my brain was just broken. That's yeah. all just one giant blur at this point. And, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what happens. It was just really funny that, like, yeah, that both of you were just, like, I just... A lot of those, like, it's in a good way, but I just sit back and just, like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, did either of you watch the movie? So, you know, yes. but it's, it, it makes for a good episode, so, yeah. It does. Cool. Glad you enjoyed it. That makes me happy, yeah. Lane says, I'm also glad you enjoyed The Wraith. I taped it off a of free Showtime or HBO weekend in the early 90s and watched it a ton. Oh, I remember those, like, hey, HBO is giving uh, the service away for a, the weekend. Um, and you could, like, oh, you used to be able to, like, un- yeah, you used to be like, or maybe like in Disney. Do you remember like Disney used to be like a paid channel too? No, I don't remember any of this stuff because it was like I was too young to like notice this, and we had a hacked cable box, so I had every channel anyways. I don't know what you would unplug, but you would like unplug something, and you could like extend it, like because it couldn't send the signal to like turn it off. But like I don't know what you would unplug. I just remember you would unplug something, but like you can't I unplug the cable because then you couldn't line. get a signal. Maybe? I think some that of them might, have that phone might line. Yeah, I think, but I, I'm again. I don't remember, and I know that like, I don't know, like some guy that, like that was somebody my dad knew had like these like chip things, and like you know mm -hmm. they would broadcast you all the channels, and then the box would just like filter or unfilter it, right? So you could just flash right. the box, and it would just like be like, okay, there's no filters anymore. So yeah, so I guess you would unplug the phone line, but yeah, I remember like having. Like, I was, when those were, like, three weekends were happening, I was too young to watch HBO or Cinemax or whatever, but I remember, like, the Disney thing, like, oh, these are shows that we don't normally get to watch, and then, you know, we'd have, like, an extended free trial or whatever, so, yeah. That's cool. Uh, and then our last email today, Joe, is from a new listener from John Livingston, subject line, Appreciation Mail. Okay, well, welcome aboard, John. New listener email. I like this. He says, greetings, guys. I am John Livingston from India. I wanted to convey that your podcasts on Fast and Furious are so entertaining and informative. It's nice to hear fellow fans discuss the mythology and history of each entry in a positive light. That is awesome. Very, very cool. I will tell you, John, that I spent way too much time recently drunk trying to figure out the rules of cricket with Rachel just by watching highlights on YouTube, and I think we did pretty good. So, okay. um, uh, if you're in India and you're a cricket fan, I'm a fan of yours. Uh, if you want Joe to explain what he thinks cricket is, ten dollars a month at the Patreon, we could do a cricket episode every lap. We we absolutely could. <laughs> just me trying. So, okay, I learned 
I learned so many words and rules because it obviously has its own vocabulary. But I think I n- nailed it. Okay, Joey, this is what it is. Okay. So cricket is just baseball and Red Rover happening at the same time. I yeah, that's kind of what I impress. Like there's there's I know there's runs. I don't know how yep. you score runs. But I know that the pitcher pitches. I would assume it's called the pitcher, and then the bat, and then they, you know, you run back and forth or whatever. I know the that cricket matches can last for days. Yep. And that's about that's the extent of my. But yeah, okay, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, it's like you get w- wickets, and you're just trying to run back and forth while they're trying to throw the ball and get you out, and you just. Go By back the way, forth. what in sports news? Uh, the Pirates just signed Rich Hill, who will turn 43 in March and barely averaged 4.2 innings per start last year. So uh, get excited for that Pirates baseball coming at you. We're making a splash. I mean, they keep signing all of these guys <laughs> to one-year million-dollar deals. So uh, we're 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 gonna have a roster, that's for sure. There'll be there'll be this, nine guys out there. This is an eight million-dollar contract. So this is this is big money for one year. I yeah, for year, a right? guy. Yeah, one year, eight million dollars. That's a lot for the Pirates. Yeah, Joey sent me a tweet to me and Brian the other day because um Brian is you know, as you guys know a Mets fan, and um it was like. The Mets had spent more in free agency in one night than the Pirates had in like a decade. Yeah, it was this off season the Mets had spent more money than the Pirates had in the last twelve or thirteen seasons. So, uh, yeah, very exciting, very very cool stuff. Hey man, things are looking up. Yeah, you got. You, I don't know if you're making splashes in like actual bodies of water, but like those puddles you're splashing around in, like they're, you're making little <laughs> ripples. So keep going. <laughs> just, just big toe kicking little puddles, man. That's like yeah. <laughs> uh, John's email goes on I came across your podcast on Twitter even though I don't have a Twitter account it's great that you have this email address that I can reach out to you say how much I enjoy the podcast and efforts to keep the discussion about the fast saga going it'd be really great to talk with you guys in one of your podcasts thank you for all the episodes and wish you all the best regards John well thank you John I'm glad that you could find us I don't know if you found us on Twitter without a Twitter account but that's cool yeah that's really cool and like I yeah Awesome, and I'm glad that you could write in, and I love getting emails, so hopefully one mm-hmm. day when you get here, I don't know how you're listening, if you're front to back, back to front, uh, random picks, doesn't matter, but when you get here, we appreciate you, John. We do. I wonder if there's anybody, and I'm sure that there probably would be, people who skip all the pit stops in these episodes and only do the Fast and Furious movies. Maybe, probably, right? Yeah, yeah, what, hey, probably, but that's all the email for today. If you want to email in family at cageclub.me, we'll read it on the next light in the fast lane. Thank you so very much. We also have a store over at Tee Public. Just search Too Fast, Too Forever over there. You can find us over there. Buy a George Pickens shirt. I got Dude, my he, Jess he This great... Is Coming shirt. I saw Rachel's tweet. Yeah, he, he was uh, number four rookie of the week by Peter Schrager on Good Morning Football this morning, too. And Kenny Pickett was five. So we had two Steelers in the top uh, five and George Pickens was number four. Made a great, great catch this weekend uh, and scored the game-winning touchdown with like seconds. Did I tell so. you that a week or two before Christmas, someone bought a kid's long sleeve of the, of the George Pickens? No, no, but that feels wild. <laughs> I really like it. Uh, it's either like a very small woman or for a child, and both things make me really happy. It's I I don't know who it's for, but I appreciated it and I laughed at, uh, I laughed about it and you know, uh, shout out to the probably the smallest version of that shirt out in the world somewhere. I hope you got it. I yeah. also oh. think there's a zero percent chance that other than you, anyone who bought that shirt even knows the podcast exists. Yeah, I, I agree. I absolutely agree. Unless some listener like bought one because we talk about it so much and was just like, I, I just yeah. have to get this. But I don't even think that. I, I, I don't. I don't even I don't even have that shirt. Like I think the Venn diagram of people who own that shirt and people who know the podcast exists, the only overlap is you. Yes, that's probably fair. Yeah. Considering it's like far and away our most popular shirt, we gotta keep we gotta do more of that. Like we us selling things tied to the podcast doesn't work. Us selling things <laughs> tied to the Fast and Furious works better. So Yeah. Take that for what it's worth. Um, I am going to uh, – oh, Alex Ellenin says uh, to me on Instagram, how was Austin? Well, Alex, uh, as you listen to this, I'm still here. I'm going to look on um, – the reason I picked up my phone is because I'm looking for new reviews. If you've not reviewed us on Apple Podcasts yet, please go do that. It helps somehow. helps the algorithms. Um, we have no new reviews since Elaine reviewed us a year ago. So if you want to do it, if you haven't done it, please and thank you so very much. Yes, please. 
All right, Joe, on the streets. This is maybe, this is going to be like maybe a supersized episode because we got lots of news on the streets. Uh, we got lots of extracurricular activities. We had a big mailbag. We, we're, we, I have, I think, eight links pasted into this document. But oh, what do you remember biggest news from the last three weeks about the Fast and Furious? My biggest takeaway and the thing that made me most excited was clickbait, but it said that Brie Larson is in talks to kind of be like a creative influence on mm -hmm. the spinoff, which simultaneously kind of confirms the spinoff, includes yep. Brie Larson, and yep. she's like part of it some like creatively. So I thought that was three big things all in one that I wanted to talk to you about. Are you as excited about this as I am? I want more Brie Larson. I want more spinoffs. I feel like, we've talked about this a lot, I feel like we're sort of, you know, to use a car phrase, stuck in neutral when it comes to spinoffs. Like, I just want this like, franchise to explode. Like, I wonder if after the main thing, it, you know, ends after 11, if, like, they would reboot it or if they would just do, like, you know, two spinoffs a year. I think that might be a lot. But, like, there are so many opportunities, so many things we've talked about. I want more of just this world. We're definitely getting at least one one of these movies a year for Infinity, essentially. I think so. I think so. Now that we're after, you know, we're, we're largely through COVID um, and production has returned to normal, I think that they can get back into a groove, I think, unless, you know, more directors leave the projects. Yeah. Like at the last minute while they're doing stuff. Yeah. While they're filming. Yeah, but that's very exciting. Like, I think that given that we, we don't know anything about Tess other than she's Tess, we don't know if she's a family member or a friend or an, an enemy or uh, an ally, but... Yeah, let's get more. Weren't we just talking about this? We don't know if John Cena is actually confirmed to be in the new movie, right? So I, I tweeted that at, at John Cena today just to because I wanted he follows like a half a million people. He doesn't follow us. He should Except follow us. us. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then Dope D responded to us on Twitter saying that like there's an Instagram account with like behind the scenes photos and he's been on set. So uh, we would assume. Okay, cool. Because there's also the picture that I posted on, on Twitter today uh, that, that Bean tweeted of him hugging Jordana on set. And he says yes. we're less than two months out from a trailer. So, you know, that might be Super Bowl. That might just be sometime That's in dead February. On Super Bowl timing. So we'll, we'll know, like, I just want to see, like, who's actually in the trailer. Because we don't know, like, we assume people are in these movies. But we don't know the extent. We don't know the role they're playing. We don't know, like, anything about it, really, do we? No. And, like, last trailer, like, when we got nine, we got Han in the trailer, right? So, like... I'm actually very excited for the first trailer, just to, like you said, to um, to just see who's in it. Because, like, so, okay, let, let's do a baseline. What do we know about Fast 10? Do we know anything about Fast 10? Uh, it's going to be in Rome, because there was, like, pictures of uh, Vin there with his family. Okay. We saw some pictures of the cars. Jordana was on set. We saw Jason Momoa. But we don't know, like, literally any story details. Except he's, I think Jason Momoa is the villain, right? Like, they said that he's going to be a villain because that's yes. interesting. On on IMDb, the plot summary just says, plot unknown. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll find out something, you know, Super Bowl-ish, but it gives me reason to watch the Super Bowl, other than, you know, the Vi it would be, so, like, when the, when the Super Bowl was in Minneapolis and the Vikings yes. that year were really good, I had yes. rented an Airbnb... That was cancelable because so I'm like, if they're in the Super Bowl, I will spend a stupid amount of money to like go see that them at home, whatever. And then they yes, got exactly. scrounged some yeah. at some point. Um, it would be really funny to me if like I'm not going to go to the Super Bowl this year, but like I'm like oh, I can't go to the Super Bowl even though the Vikings are in it and they're they're they're, they're going to win their first Super Bowl ever because I have to stay at home and watch the Fast X trailer. No, you wouldn't do that. You could just watch I it. I know. I know. Minutes later. In the stadium, on your phone, probably. Watch it on my phone. Exactly. That'd be fun. Where is the Super Bowl this year? Mm, I don't know. State Farm in Glendale, Arizona. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yes. You know, pretty pretty close to um, Hollywood to and to Shardos Marketing Cafe. Yeah, true. So we got Brie Larson. We got John Cena, maybe. You know who is supposedly returning to 10? I don't know how. I have ideas, maybe. Gal Gadot rumored to come back as Giselle. Yes! This was a big rumor recently. Um, would be awesome. Obviously, we've been clamoring for this for a while, too, in any shape mm -hmm. or form. I'm I'm going to guess that because they brought Han back, that Gal is going to come back as maybe like a flashback? Like they're That's gonna exactly like a what I'm thinking. Scene. Yep. Because 
in nine, we were promised justice is coming and that didn't happen. I'm assuming 10 will actually be justice is coming. And I'm going to assume that that's going to include some kind of flashback with them. I think you're spot on. And I don't think it'll be anything very significant. I think it'll just be like, or, you know, just like one tidbit that she's in because like are they gonna try to revive a third character from the dead <laughs> i don't know um because you know brian right brian might come back han well brian's not dead but like paul not in back, the universe but, yeah. but he might come back and han and yeah i do oh boy i don't know I mean, we didn't see the body so she could come back but i feel like at a certain point like we keep saying you can't keep adding new stuff you gotta have to be like we're gonna condense this not expand it out so i don't know and I think everybody will be happy if she's, like, back in a flashback cameo that's new material of her and Han, and also they yeah. don't have to, like, fully bring a character back and have to, like, rework everything again. Well, I mean, not that they care, but... Oh, speaking of spinoffs and stuff, Charlize Theron said she's still open to a Fast and Furious spinoff, which, of course, she would. Why wouldn't she be? I don't know if that would be the same one as the Brie Larson one or a different one, the Letty Led one, whatever, but, you know, Charlize is still game to play some more Cypher. Cool. Works for us. I have other stuff here. It's not really Fast and Furious specific. It's just more Go things ahead. that the actors are doing. But is there anything else of Fast and Furious specific note that you've seen? Because I don't think there is, but just checking no. before we move on. No, not that I remember. So, nope. Go ahead. So we, we, we tease this sort of on the Riddick episode, but there's lots of Black Adam talk. That Black Adam kind of bombed at the box office. And, and The Rock, as we've mentioned on here, has been like, no, man, it didn't bomb. It's been great. Like, we're, we're making money hand over fist. And she's like, well, not really, but... No, then he, like, after we talked about that, unfollowed, like, Black Adam and DC or whatever on Twitter, too, remember? Yeah, because, so Black Adam is now streamable on HBO Max. I have not watched it yet, but I will hopefully this week. I need, I need to watch it before the end of the year because it could crack my top ten. It's not going to crack my top ten, but it could crack my top ten. Um, yes. But, yeah, because while, like, literally while we were recording the Riddick episode, I think I left it in, James Gunn came out, or or maybe Dwayne came out, one of them came out, which is like, hey, you know, we, we want to keep working together, we have plans for the future for Black Adam and the DCEU, but, but, it's not going to be in chapter one, um, so, stay tuned or something, it's just like, okay, so like, they're, they're breaking up, they're consciously uncoupling. Man, I really want to feel, like, figure out what the fuck it's like with Vin and The Rock together, because, like, we, we were imagining that this was a lot of Vin's personality not yep. mixing with The Rock. More recently, it seems like a lot of what The Rock is doing... Well, I think, you know, a, a phrase that we've used a lot is that he has been referred to as franchise Viagra, and he obviously has not really failed at a lot of things, and it feels like, to a certain extent, Black Adam is his first kind of failure. Like, not that, you yeah. know, like, movies like Rampage or whatever have been, like, wild successes, but, like, everything he's done has been, like, you know it's accomplished the thing he set out to do, and this maybe has it. And I wonder, like, it might have sent him, you know, his world into a tailspin. I think so. I think it would be, like, pretty... Because you're on, like, a fucking run, too. You know what I mean? Like, this is, like... Mm -hmm. He was, like, top of the world. Like, you know, you have Jumanji hitting. You have, even, like you said, Rampage and, like, these stupid ones. Like, people are still watching them, and, like, they're making money. And then you're like, yep. okay, I'm gonna start my own franchise that's all about me. And it yep. flops. Like, yep. that has to be, like, a shot, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, like, you know, I we, we're rooting for The Rock, because I like him as a person. I like, we love I Young too. Rock, which we'll still get to. But yeah. there is, there's a little bit of, like, delicious comeuppance here, I think, that, you know, obviously, we, Vin has his issues. We, we, you know, he's not without his flaws, but we still have to root for him doing the podcast that we're doing. And, like... Oh, it's yeah. kind of nice yeah. that, like, you know, one of his enemies is not really doing all that well. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want him to fail, but, like, I'd rather The Rock fail than Vin fail, given the, the focus of our podcast. This shot might be exactly what we need to actually get The Rock back in the Fast and the Furious. Very maybe. Like, oh, I need a win. Where will people love me again if Hobbs comes back? Yep, and if they just, like... Vin and The Rock shake hands, he comes mm -hmm. back to 10B, it'll be mm -hmm. like, okay, it'll be the biggest movie ever, they know that they need it, it it'll be as big as De Niro and Pacino in Heat, I think. Not as good, but as big. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, can you believe Vin and The Rock on screen together again? 
Yeah, I, like I, I after can. all like this can... fighting <laughs> and the Instagram posts and yeah. Black Adam sucking, like yep. man, this will be crazy. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, like that happened. Like I, I'm still like shocked. Like I, not shocked, but I'm very curious to see what they do with Statham in ten because like. We didn't know if he was going to be in it. Then there's the post credit scene in 9. It's just like, I don't know. Like, there's so many different ways a 10 could go. And I don't know what the story... Like, I don't know if Cypher's the villain. Like, I'm excited for 10, the trailer specifically, even though I don't really, like, watch trailers. Because I just... I don't know what this is going to be. And considering you and I are going to spend dozens of hours next year watching and talking about this, uh, it'd be nice to know what we're going to talk about. I agree. I'm excited. We're getting there, dude. A couple months. Super Bowl. We'll be there. Two other very quick things. Idris Elba is going to be in, I think, like a DLC pack for Cyberpunk 2077. The only reason that's notable to me, like the only reason I'm bringing it up here is because kind of not the star of Cyberpunk, but like what they sold it on was Keanu was in the game. And so oh, yeah, Keanu was rumored for Hobbs and Shaw. So now we got Hobbs and Shaw sort of one from the movie and one sort of tangentially related. Both going to, you know, who knows? But I just thought like, oh, kind of a sort of Fast and Furious spin-off connection there. Yeah. And then the other thing, and I think Reaction Rocket also maybe mentioned us in here, but there's a new movie called Killer Vacation that's coming out with John Cena and Jason Momoa. And it's like, oh, two family members. It's like, not really. Like, at a certain point, there's going to be 40 huge actors in this movie. And, yes. like, any time the two of them team up, it's like, oh, Red Notice. Like, look, it's Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot. It's like, well, that kind of is. But it's also, like, none of them are in the franchise anymore, right? So, like, it's it's like, oh, yeah, it's the family, but it's not really the family, but it's kind of the family, so... I'll watch it though. I like John Cena. Like, I, what was the one that was like uh, Vacation Friends or something? Like that. Oh one? yeah, I still haven't seen that. Yeah, you. I remember you talking about that. It was a lot of fun. It was definitely a yeah. lot of fun. So uh, I'll um I'll watch another John Cena movie. Maybe he just maybe maybe John Cena can be Black Adam. <laughs> White Adam. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh god. I think maybe he'll do better at the box office based on what we know about <laughs> about people. I would imagine, especially down here where I am right now, it would do it would do much better if it was White Adam. <laughs> I think so. Uh. Uh, that's that that exhausts the list of my news that I have. Is there anything else that you have seen in the last few weeks? Oh, also, I should give a shout out to uh, Liam Underwood, friend of the show, past guest of the show, Liam Underwood. He was the one who tagged us in the Giselle thing. I didn't see that. Like that was one thing that I like, did make it to my. I feel like that would have been bigger news, but I didn't see that, so I have no idea. Oh, also. Reaction Rock was saying there was like fast ten screenings or something, so like there's spoilers out there. I don't know, but just like we're we're we're, we're picking the momentum. Yeah, it just uh, it's just getting itchy. I, but like screenings, it feels early for test screenings. But like, <sighs> I saw so there was like a movie called Danny Boyle made a movie called Sunshine that I saw like months early, I think, and like there was like a big sci-fi spectacle at the end, and like there was literally on screen just said like unfinished sci-fi cgi set piece here or whatever and i'm like oh and like i haven't seen the movie for real so like i don't like it might just be like car chase insert car chase here like it might be they might trying to gauge like how the story works i have no idea i remember did we talk about this before that i that like do you remember when this like when one of the star wars leaked like probably like episode two okay no not really but maybe what's is there more to it there was like a test screen leak and like i remember having it and it was like months before the movie was supposed to come out, and huh. like all of all of the like. Oh no! I think it was three. I think it was three because I think I remember that happening. And I think I yeah, for, like, and, like a while, action I think sequences. I only seen three. Yeah. Yes. 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 They would like play forward and then like play in reverse at like half speed, and then like play forward and then like play in reverse at half speed because like you could see that they were still like editing this parts of it. But I remember like trying to watch it and being like, I don't want to see it like this. Like this is not like it's not cool. It's just like it's cool that you have access, but not like the way that you want to see it. Yeah, and also, like, when I went to go see the movie 42, the Jackie Robinson movie, I saw, like, a really early screening of that, and it was, like, there was, like, notes, like, need music here. <laughs> well, you were you were instrumental in the filming of that movie, right? Me? Yeah, didn't you drive Harrison Ford around or something? No, that was that was the same time, but it was, um, it was to watch the screening of it, not to do the movie. Oh, it wasn't for the actual filming, it was for the, for the, the, okay. I remember, yes. I remember you driving Harrison Ford around 4.42. I just didn't remember the timing of it. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I remember watching the movie and it being, like, very quiet at points, which is unnerving if, like, in the experience. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're, yeah. like... Yeah. Because it doesn't have music. So you're, like, what the fuck is happening? It's, like, just dead silent right. here. And then it was, like, add music here. And you're, like, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Weird. Um, 
I think that's all the news, though. Is there anything else that you've seen? Anything else you remember from the last few weeks? No, that's it. Is well, speaking of it, we 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 sort of toyed around it, but Joe is Twain Johnson in Fast Ten. He's not even in the DCU. <laughs> He's nowhere. He's in limbo. He's like me at the airport yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, speaking of that, Joe, extracurricular activities. What have you been up to in the past three weeks, Mr. Grinch? Um, I have some cool updates of things that I've done and and just excitement. Um, I went to go visit my parents uh, like last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, just to see them like before it like snows and gets bad because driving between Connecticut and Pennsylvania like through the mountains like you can catch like weird snows and stuff like that. I have a small car. I don't want to do that yep. until spring. So, um, got to see them, which was very cool. Also, I came back from there and I did something that was way overdue, but I got a Nintendo Switch. And so, oh um, yes, yes, yes. I forgot that this was in the last three weeks. Yes. Yes. So I've been playing with that. Um, I got to replay Pokemon Snap. Uh, it's fun having all the old N64 games. Um, and then, like, we just got, like, Mario Kart and Mario Party. And Rachel and I have been yeah. playing Drunk, and it's fun. She's actually... I'm, I'm co-piloting her through, um, A Link to the Past. Cause okay, Because she's okay. not played any mm -hmm. of these games besides Ocarina of Time. So we're, like, doing through that as a team. Oh, yeah, because you, jo you joined our Nintendo family, so you have access to all the, the classic games and stuff like that. Yes, so we've been doing that. Um, I was playing a little bit of Majora's Mask, but either way, lots of fun. I think it's a cool thing, um, and we're enjoying it. I am currently at Rachel's parents' house, which I think is fun, and I'll, oh, I'll bring that up later. Never mind. I'm going to just save what I'm thinking for okay. later. Okay, okay. Um, Teaser. We... Yeah, we we watched two cool things. One, um, we had talked about it a little bit with Wes, but we saved it to watch with them until we got here, and that was uh, the Murderville Christmas special. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. Yep, what did you think of it? I really liked it. Did you really like it? I think it was really funny. I think it was the best one they've done. I, I, this made me wish. I, I, I understand why you have to do like a first season of it, but I kind of wish that they don't do more seasons, that they just do like four of these a year. Just do like about like... Do like the Easter special or the Fourth of July cool. special because, like, I feel yeah, like Halloween, a longer version. I get it. Yes, our big complaint you and me, like, I thought about this while watching it. Like, our complaint about the first season was that every episode is the same, and like this kind of is. But when you only have one, you don't get like, oh, it's the same beats again. Like, it just it brings like Marshawn Lynch coming back was fun. Like, it just it was really. I think it was the best episode they did. I think it was excellent. Um, and we, you know, like we introduced it to them. And I think everybody really enjoyed it. And I think you're right. I would totally be fine with not seasons, but just like one-off specials. Doesn't matter for what, like whatever fun time theme they come up with. Uh, and make them bigger like this or where you have like, you know, because this one is Jason Bateman and Maya Rudolph. And it's like an hour long as opposed to half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And just like make a fun time spectacular one. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. I'm with you. So yeah, greatly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and um, that good wreck. wreck. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a fun thing. I mean, guess now we're like past Christmas, but it was a lot of fun to watch with your family as a Christmas joyous thing. Hope hope other people did. Yeah, I you know I know that you uh, think of me as Mr. Christmas, and I have not done much to spell that this month. But um, I I was watching like some Christmas stuff, like not really. Like what we talked about with Chris about like the alternative Christmas versus the regular, like some Hallmark stuff or whatever, like the one that Tobin wrote and some other ones, whatever. But I was also watching alternative things. And like basically once it hit like December 22nd, like I got on a plane to come down here. It's just like, nope, no more. Like I don't want to listen to Christmas music after Christmas. I don't want to watch any Christmas movies. Like we're just, we're through it. Um, you know, Delicious. this house is de decorated to the nines, but I'm like, no, next year. I got to get back to it next year. But for now, you're no just, more Christmas. No boss. You're just trying your hardest to make sure that what I said was not true. My it's, heart is just admirable that you're trying. Is too big. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know. Now, the, like, the, one of the coolest things that I watched yeah. recently, and I highly recommend this, we, we probably, no, I don't think we could do it for an episode, but I think you definitely need to watch it. You guys know that I love uh, sports docs, 
right? Sports documentaries. We talk about... Speaking, uh, speaking of, before you go further, I've watched three of the four untold. Have you watched any of the John Voice things? We made a pact on air that we would watch the other thing, other person's thing, and I, I haven't heard Hyde nor Hair of yours. What it, what it was it? What was I supposed to watch? You said you're going to watch like the Falcons thing or the Mariners thing or like any of those things. Oh, I keep forgetting, dude. Like, actually, send me a me like when I get back, send me a message <laughs> and I will watch one of them. I literally just forget because it's like it's not it's on YouTube, right? So like I'm I don't really it is use on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, like I know a lot of my friends. We talk about this too. Like a lot of my friends like watch videos on YouTube of like all kinds of shit. I watch like how to fix something if I don't know and like music videos. So, like, I, I often you. lose, like, there's no content that I actually watch on YouTube. So, yes, sure. remind me, I will watch it. Okay. Okay. But sports docs, go for it. We, you just brought up the Untolds. Yes, love it. There's another batch that came out, like, a year ago on Netflix called Bad Sport. Have you heard of these? Bad Sport? No. Okay, so they're, like, sports docs, but, like, s somehow involve criminal activity. Okay? Okay. Okay. They're all about an hour long, like 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the content. And you don't have to watch them in order. It's not like an anthology of anything. So just pick which ones you want. But there's one called Need for Weed, okay? And it's about this uh -huh. guy who's named Randy Lanier who had an auto racing team. And he paid for it by being a giant drug smuggler. Okay, very, very cool. So it has, like, car racing, it has criminal activity, it has drug smuggling. So I'm watching this. I think it's awesome. I think, every, like, all of you guys should watch it, even if you're not a car fan, even if you're not a weed fan, like, whatever. It doesn't matter. It hits everything all at once. It's And it's, like, you know, just wild stories of what's happening. Sure. But um, yeah. one of the coolest things was is um, they're racing, and they're, like, okay, they show, you know, clips of the races, right? And... In one of the races, he's racing this guy, okay, who's named Bobby Rahal. And Bobby Rahal owns the Mercedes dealership that's, like, right by my house in Pittsburgh. Oh, cool. Okay. So, local references. And I didn't hear anything about it beforehand. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, I missed it, like, in the last year or whatever. So, yeah. uh, if you guys did too, give it a watch. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Cool. Very, very cool. Have you watched all six of them? No, we watched this one and then we also watched one that was on uh something that i didn't even know existed and happened but there was a a figure skating uh scandal in the olympics in like oh, fuck, oh yeah in 2002 yeah 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 I, yeah I, I, do you I, remember that actually sport. happening I remember vaguely, I don't remember details about it, but I remember, like, that was back when I was, like, you know, unabashedly big Olympics kid and or fan, teen, I guess teen then, whatever. But I remember it happening. I don't remember details about it, but I saw when I was, when you were talking about it, I was looking up what episodes they were on. I'm like, oh, I kind of remember that. I don't know anything about it, but I remember that being a thing. That one was really good. We watched the cricket one, too, and the cricket one was pretty wild. Actually, that's what got us into the, like, we need to figure out the rules cool. of cricket before we watch this yep. one. Um, the cricket one was pretty wild because, like, you know when you watch a sport, like, when you're actually watching a sporting event, and, like, the coach doesn't call the timeout, and the clock runs down, and you're like, why the fuck did he do that, right? Yep. This mm -hmm. was, like, that, something sort of kind of similar to that happened in the cricket match, but it was also, like, he was getting paid <laughs> to, like, throw Oh, matches. wow, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And so it's, like, he does this, like, really weird thing, and everybody's like, why the fuck would you do, like, that doesn't make any sense, like, why would you do that? And then it's like, oh, well, because, like, they were, you know, just, like, fucking just just throwing matches. So right. that makes sense. And you're like, okay. Yeah. So that one was interesting, but I, the figure skating one was actually really good because it's, like, they, like, go down to exactly, like, how you could do this and, like, what judge it would be and things like this, you know? Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those are cool. Give them a watch uh, if you're bored, uh, but definitely watch the Need for Weed one. That one's really, really interesting. It gave me big Cocaine Cowboys vibes. Have you ever seen that movie? No, I've heard about it. I've heard, like, as a reference to things, but I don't know what that is. Uh, cocaine Cowboys was, like, how this, like, the guys that were, like, really big cocaine importers, and it actually uh, then ties into sports because, like, they, like, the guy who's, like, the main guy says, like, oh, yeah, like, before the Super Bowl, like, all the Steelers were at my house doing cocaine all night, and then, like, they went and won the Super Bowl, like, 
in whatever, whatever seven oh, Super okay. Bowl team okay. it was. Cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty cool. It, it reminded me of that. But also, Cocaine Cowboys is a great movie too. If like you have, if you like drug documentaries, <laughs> that one's pretty good. Sure. So yeah. Um, have you guys been to the that, theaters to see anything in the in the recently or no? No, I haven't been to the theater in a long time. Um, we were watching stuff on streaming and. It's kind of cold. Like, I don't know. Theater feels it like a cold. summery kind of... Like a spring summery kind of thing. And also, we know that um the the Oscar noms are going to come out soon. And, like, I'm going to spend, like, you know, pretty much a month at, at the theater to try to catch up, so... Oh, so you're waiting. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, there's there's a handful that, like, you could probably kind of predict. And I think a lot of them are now also on VOD also. Like, the only thing to go see in theaters for sure right now is Avatar, Avatar 2 or... Babylon, the new Damien Chazelle movie, which I know how much you love La La Land, so of course you're gonna love this one too. Um, Babylon's the one that everybody's actually... talking about on Twitter right now. That like it's not doing well, and then people are celebrating that it's not doing well, and people are like, "You're idiots for celebrating it because you won't get any more of these movies." And like you also, I, this is another one that like again, I didn't see fucking any like promo. This was for this. it was kind of out there. It was kind of out there in terms of promo. I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna see it hopefully if I can get back see it this weekend. Um but it's like three hours long. Like it's just it's the kind of thing where it's like this is just like kind of insufferably long and pretentious and whatever. But it's also the same kind of thing like the you know people saying you shouldn't be celebrating like I want to see people taking big swings. You know what I mean? Like I want to see people like doing weird stuff and making weird movies and ambitious movies and like if things like this keep flopping, they're right. They're not gonna make more of it. So I, you know, I want it to be good. I don't know if it is good or not. I've seen mixed things about it, but I think I'm going to like it, but I don't know. Yeah. Anything else that you've done in the last three weeks? No, that was, I think that sums it up. I, I got out everything that I was excited about. How about you? Well, um, I'm still doing yoga every day until I got down here. I went to see one concert with the Duke, with Dan, the Duke Hayden. Uh, we saw this cool. band called Hop Along, who he really likes. Do you know the band Hop Along or no? No, I don't. I just I just like Dan the Duke Hayden, so I was excited yeah. to spend time with him. He's a good dude. Yeah, we um, they're like a Philly band. We saw them in Brooklyn. This was like they were, they did like a tour this summer, and they canceled the date for some reason. They rescheduled it to December, so like they did like they hadn't done the show in like four months, and then they just did this one show. We're like, that's weird, but you know. Um, so we had like a really good burger, this really cool place that I knew about. Then we went there. It was the weirdest concert crowd. Like I'm used to Brooklyn hipsters, but this was like a different kind of like, me and him were just like, what is going on here? And then like in the middle of one of their songs, this dude goes up on stage and he brings his like girlfriend up on stage. And it's so awkward. Like it was clearly like orchestrated beforehand, but like he goes up on stage, he's just like, Hey, I'm whatever. And you know, that's my girlfriend. And like, she looks, she looks mortified. He's like, we've been dating for like 20 years, and you know, I just, I just really want to ask. And like, he gets down and like, and it proposes to her, and like, she like says yes, but it's just like, this is the worst way to do it. And everyone kind of cheers, and we're just like, oh my god. And like, they I think for being get in down a crowd, stage. for being in a crowd, like, I guess a smaller band is a better <laughs> vibe. I guess I... so, but like. It was, it was one of those things where, like, you've been dating this girl for 20 years. You could tell that she's, like, embarrassed, doesn't want to do this. Like, why did you think a public proposal in the middle of a song? Like, they're still playing around them. Like, they're just, like, it's, like, oh. instrumental part. I'm, like, I'm, like, yeah, like, this is so weird, man. And, like, we're, like, weird. not making fun of her. Like, we're just, like, this is so uncomfortable. It was weird. But they were great. The band was amazing. Um, but, like, it was just, like, a weird vibe. And, like, that was weird. And I don't know. It was, it was, it was strange. What if it, like, wasn't her favorite band? What if she's been, like, nagging him, like, dude, <laughs> if you don't propose, I am so leaving your ass. And, like, he's dragged this out for so long that he's like, okay, look, I probably got about another five years left if I don't <laughs> propose that I can drag this out for. And that'll just, you know, suck up all of her good years. When we go see my favorite band, I'll announce to everyone that we've been dating for 20 years and that now I'm ready to propose. I don't know, man. It was, I, 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 I want to know everything about how it happened. Right? And I also want to know nothing more about how it happened. Like if, like, if I knew everything or nothing, I'm okay either way. Because I, I can't imagine the story's better than what I made up in my head, right? Like No, right. Yeah, no, it's. I, I hope it's that. I don't know if it is that or not, but it was just like, this is this is weird. What if he lied? What if this is just like when you tell a restaurant it's your birthday to get a free dessert, 
<laughs> he just wanted to be on stage with his favorite band, and that's why she's like, God damn it, I can't believe he's going through with this. And, like, they've been I married thought, for I, 20 I, yeah. years. Yeah, that maybe. Like, I thought that might, like, they, he might have already proposed, but, like, it was all just so awkward. Like, I, I don't know. I, I hope for their, for both of their sake that this was not the first proposal. But if it was, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to you, lady. Look on your marriage. Yeah. Anything else? I saw Avatar 2 in theaters, which I loved, which I think is incredible. I think you should see it in theaters if you can. Apparently the way to see it is high frame rate and 3D. I did not see the high frame rate, but I saw it in 3D, like, in my theater's version of IMAX. And I thought it was great. Okay, cool. Really, really, really good. It's it's closing in a billion. You know, it has to make two billion, as you talked about, to break even. I think it's going to, but um, yeah, like there's there's no there's no competition. Like it's just it's it's free it's free sailing or whatever. Yeah, the the thing about Avatar was like I knew it was going to be so hype, and I didn't get tickets, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to wait till this crowd dies down, which it, I think it won't you, I ever think like be, be empty. Yes, but no, now we're at a point right. where it's like. Yeah, I'll be able to get, like, you know, reserve my nice seats in the back, watch. It's still going to be in theaters. It's still going to be in 3D. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, this isn't a movie that I'm, like, worried about getting it, like, getting in there before they take it out of the theater. It's going to be like, no, this fucker is going to run for, like, a month and a half, right? Right, and I think, you know, when we did Dear John on this very podcast, shout out to Haley, and we were like, oh, this is the movie that dethroned the first Avatar. I was looking at, like, what might dethrone this? And I think, if I have to guess, you know, shout out once again to Channing Tatum, I think Magic Mike's Last Dance will possibly yes. be the one, because, like, I don't think there's anything in January that's going to happen, but, like, you know, Valentine's Day, where, like, you know, yes. people like yes. me, and then also women, mostly women, are going to go see that movie in theaters. Yep. Um, I, you know, I think, I don't think that, like, the Tom Hanks, A Man Called Otto is going to do anything. Like, Babylon got steamrolled by it. There's literally nothing else in January, so, like, I think it's going to cruise to two plus billion. And then I would guess my money is on Magic Mike dethroning it. So Channing, the only thing more powerful than James Cameron Avatar is Channing Tatum. That's fucking incredible. I hope he does. Right? I hope that every Avatar movie that comes out is just just dethroned by Channing Tatum two months later. <laughs> That would, would be, be like so the coolest good. record ever. That's like a really fun, like you know, they're like every like every Thursday night game that they play at home in twenty degree weather. You know, it's like one of those things. You're like Channing right. Tatum has dethroned every Avatar movie that's ever come out across three decades. You're like, wow. Yep. And like he doesn't even realize it. He's just like, hey man, I'm just, I'm just making movies. I'm just out here making movies. Yeah, yeah. He just doesn't give a fuck. But there's somebody out there that like has like a the the super. Uh, we know that this isn't true, but like the super movie algorithm that's like just creating right. it, and they're like, "Oh, we need the Channing movie to line up right behind Avatar." Exactly forty-seven days later, if it releases, mm -hmm. that's when you get it. I think. I think realistic, like that. Like the simpler explanation is that like these Avatar movies come out in early December, and it's like whatever the big Valentine's Day movie is, like that's what it is. And like Channing does a lot of those movies, right? So it's like, yep, that's you know, exactly. If he makes more yeah. another romance movie, it just like knock it off. So yeah, I don't know. yep. So I'm down in Texas. I came down here on the 22nd, had a nice time with my family, did like a birthday celebration for me the first night, did Christmas, all that stuff. Everything cool. was good, nice, pleasant, uneventful. Go to the airport yesterday. And if you watch the early. news, I think you know the rest of this story. Yes. Because um, it's get all over the news. I knew the airport was going to be slammed. Southwest is getting like probed by like the DOJ or something or some some major government organization because like they keep getting like, – I wasn't on Southwest. I was on Spirit. Uh, the worst airline in America. Why? Um, Why it was did you cheap, do this? It was, because it was like half the price of the United flight and nothing else was nonstop. And I'm just like, this is like, a, whatever. And like coming down here, it was easy. There was no delay. We got here early. Like it was super seamless. That's and awesome. And then yesterday, okay. we get there. I get to the airport at 3.15 for a 5.30 flight. At 5 o'clock, we're at the gate. We're supposed to board at 4.45. They're like, we're still waiting for the okay. I see one flight attendant go on. Um, she goes on there. We see nobody else. Um, you know, spirits all the way at the one end of the Austin airport, and they share these gates with American. And then, like, you know, like they're at five fifteen, at five thirty, at five forty-five, at six o'clock. They're like, we still want to be okay. Just you know, take your seat. Eventually, like we have to clear the the area because we need to board this American flight. Get this out of there. At seven thirty, the girl comes out of like the flight attendant comes out of the plane, and everyone like mobs her for answers. And like she's just like, I don't have any. I'm so sorry. Like I just I, I don't really. And she like walks away. And, yep. like, all the Smart. while we're getting texts from Spirit, like, 
hey, you're scheduled to leave at 6.05. And, like, I got that text at 6.20. And, like, that happened, like, three or four times. Yeah. Yeah. And it was terrible. And so I, you know, I made friends at the gate. Like, there was this woman I got behind. Like, she was having issues with, like, the the bag, like, the, you know, the computer you, like, tag your bag with or whatever. Um, yeah. And she was like, I'm, I'm having issues. And the guy was like, I'm having issues too or whatever. And like, so we're just going to line together. When we find out we're on the same plane, you know, she's about our age ish. She's pregnant. She's flying home to her husband in New York because they're flying to France. Like, we're, whatever, just talk, small talk, oh, whatever. God. Okay. And so we, we get through the gate and, you know, eventually, you know, we get, uh, you know, we, we sort of separate or whatever. But then, like, after all this nonsense happens, I find her again. We start chatting, whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to go see if I can, like, wander around and just, like, get some answers because there's no spirit employees anywhere. And yes, I see the girl, hiding. like, her name is, yes. And they're, well, no, they're not hiding because there's just none of them. And so I But I mean, and the ones the that, like, attendant. the one person yes, that is there correct. is like, I'm not dealing with these fucking people on Christmas. Yes. Tell, all of them asking me why they don't have a flight. I'm in the back hiding. So. Yes. At one point, the, um, the, 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 the airport employee comes out through, like, the gate and she just, like, I got no answers. She, like, answered, like, two questions. Like, I got no more answers. I'm leaving. I, I can't, I can't help any of you. I'm so sorry. I'm leaving. And she just, like, walks off. I'm like, that's good. Like, Fair. that's, you know, what you should do. Yep. So I see Jennifer, the spirit flight attendant, just sort of sitting alone. And I, I just go and start talking to her. And I'm like, hey, I'm not trying to get answers. I know you don't have any answers. Just, like, just chatting with her and, like, whatever. And just, like, talking to her about, like, being a flight attendant, but also, like, trying to extract answers. What I learned from all of this is the same thing I learned when I saw, like, how the mail is delivered. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, conveyor belts of, like, letters and packages and, like, laser scanning the shit and, like, looking for addresses and, like, distributing yeah. it. Like, it. Like, the fact that anything you mail ever gets where it's going is a miracle. Talking to Jennifer and talking to, like, a JetBlue pilot who was trying to get to Orlando so he could fly today, because it was yesterday, because he's not even on the clock. He's just trying to get where he needs to go to fly out. Um, yes. Talking to them, like... The fact that any plane gets anywhere ever on time is a miracle. <laughs> like they know less than the 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 the, the, like the 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 people on board. Like the the pilot was saying that sometimes, like if a plane gets diverted because of weather or any other reason, it'll pop up on the in-flight navigation thing and be like, "You're getting diverted to Dallas." And then, like people on the plane, will be like, they'll ask the flight attendant, be like, "Hey, uh, are we going? Why are we going to Dallas?" I'm like, I don't know. We don't know that yet. And then they'll be told. Like Jennifer, the flight attendant, was not getting updates. I was getting updates before she was. Our updates weren't helpful, but she was getting nothing. She's like, I got not. She's just like sitting around. I know that most of the most of her paycheck comes from just waiting. It's just yeah. like that they get they wait like they have like five hundred wait hours a month. I'm like, this is so great. Or like whatever, or maybe a quarter. Who knows? Like just it's. It's insane. It can't be that five hundred a month because that's more hours. That's almost as many hours in a month. Like it's yes. just it's it's wild how inefficient all of that is. And like Spirit is bad, but it seems like it's all airlines. So the fact that anyone oh, gets I hate anywhere all on airlines. time, it's terrible. Yeah, the airlines. Like this is this is the whole point of why we game airline miles is because yep. all airlines suck. It's only tolerable if you're not actually paying for the flight. If you, right. like, spend actual cash monies on a ticket for a plane and then you have to deal with bullshit like this, it's like, this is fucking the worst. But exactly. in my case, like, people are like, oh, like, do you, like, I guess I've had, like, more recent, like, since I haven't paid for flights, but, like, more recent, like, bad experiences on airlines. But at the same time, I'm like, well, I didn't fucking pay for this flight anyway. So, like, what, you right. know what I mean? Like, free anything is good, right? So. Right. And, like, this, like, I'm in a better situation here than most people on that flight because, like, I still have family here. Like, my parents came. Like, they spent yes. four hours in the car yesterday, like, driving to the airport, dropping me off, going back home, then coming back to pick me up and driving back home. Like, I felt bad for them. But, like, I have family here. I don't have to pay for a hotel. I don't have to whatever. Like, I found Ubers. a flight to go back on Thursday. Yeah, exactly. Like, all, like, Work. hundreds of dollars. Yes. The fact that my boss is flexible, that, like, yep. uh, we don't have, like, a heavy, busy schedule this week. Like, all that like, is, like, what if like, you were, like, like a I server? Really... Yeah. Like a yeah. bartender or something. Like, somebody that, like, only gets paid, like, for being there. And it's like, okay, yeah. it's just after Christmas, and, like, now you have to miss all this work because, like, these assholes can't figure out how to fly a plane, so. It's it's, it's just crazy. So, like, I found a flight back on Thursday. I still had a flight credit from United that was for my South by 2020 flight that never happened, that that, that credit was still good. I guess they kept kicking it out. So like this was basically covered. It almost covered the flight entirely. So like when spirit refunds me, I'll probably like 
be I'll more than break even, but it's just miserable. Like I was talking like to this woman, you know, Kirsten, the, the pregnant woman, we're just like, I'm like, should we drive? Because like, it's terrible weather. Like, I, I don't want to drive, but like, I know that like, at least to a certain extent, like I would be in control of getting back. Like, I, I trust more so United on Thursday by far than Spirit, but like, there's no guarantee that plane's going to leave. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. Sure. I don't know, man. It's just wild, but you know, it's, I, things could be worse, but I also like, I just want to be home. Like, I feel bad for my cats being alone and like, I'm flying, I take another trip next week, right? So like, yeah, ugh. yeah, true. I'm sorry, anyway. Brian. But you're good. The only you're thing safe. I've been, well, you're thank healthy. You. I'm safe. I'm good. Yes. Yeah. The only other thing I want to say is that I've been watching a ton of shit because it's the year end. I'm trying to see as much as I can. So here are some quick hits uh, of things that I really, really enjoyed if you want to watch. The, the film White Noise he is coming to Netflix this weekend as a recording. It's out now as you listen to this, whether you're a patron or a regular listener. It's on Netflix. It's based on a Don DeLillo book. The book is one of my favorites. The he, As an author, he's one of my favorites. Um, the movie's incredible. Like, I didn't think the, Bob and I saw it together, like, we paid to see the theaters before it hit Netflix, and we were both kind of, like, skeptical, and it's so good. I don't know if you're gonna, I don't know if people who haven't read the book are going to love it. I think you'll like it. I think it's really good, though, and I think you should give it a shot. I think it's probably gonna be nominated for some Oscars, but you, know, you can do your okay. critical evaluations in January when those come out, but I loved that. Love the Fablemans in theaters, the new Spielberg movie. That's definitely gonna be nominated for things, so I'm sure you and Rachel will see that in January sometime. Cool. I think that's also available on the VOD. I watched this documentary called The Pez Outlaw, which is about this guy who was like smuggling in Pez dispensers from Europe that like weren't sold here and he was like making all this crazy money. That was pretty fun. That sounds really fun. That sounds way up my alley. Okay, cool. It was really cool. It, yeah, because it, it, it's just like this like CD under, like it's, it's like a crime, it's basically shot like a crime doc, but it's about a guy like smuggling Pez dispensers. Um, so it, it's, very, it's very cool. I really enjoyed that. The Chip and Dale movie on Disney Plus is really fun. People were kind of bashing that for being like just like IP and content like Space Jam 2 and stuff like that. But I'm like, this is what I want, man. Like, it's cool. And I just, I really enjoyed it. I don't know. So maybe I'm yeah. easy to please. Maybe not. I don't know. The Timothy Chalamet movie, Bones and All, where he is a cannibal, uh, is incredible. Okay. He's great. You sold me it's great. I don't know that it's going to be nominated for anything. I would hope that it is, but it's by Luca Guadagnino, who did We Need to Go Swimming Right Now, so he's worked with Timmy before. Oh, he did okay, the new okay. Suspiria. So, like, it's great. It's really, really, really good. That's one of my favorites of the year. And then I watched the new... My sister and I have been watching, like, a movie a night while I'm down here. We watched the new Knives Out, Glass Onion, which I didn't really like Knives Out much. I think we've talked about that on here, but Glass Onion I really, really enjoyed. I okay, like it a lot cool. more, so that's that. on Netflix if you want to see that. Yep, that's going to be yep. a good one. And then also on Netflix is, again, sold you on this, Aubrey Plaza, um, in a movie called Emily the Criminal, where she, you know, sort of down on her luck and gets into this life of crime. Also really, really good. So that's another well, recommendation I, I would give. That. Yeah. Um, we're caught, I'm doing an episode tonight with Brian for his show for High School Summer Party. And Isla will be on there because it's going to be like an AP end of the year. Let's talk about this year in teen movies. So I've been watching a lot of those too. So if you want even more sort of bite-sized reviews and thoughts and opinions, go keep your eyes peeled to Brian's feed. I'll be talking about, you know, a bunch of different things that I've seen between now and then. But, you know, I've seen like so many movies is because I'm just like, you know, work has been slow and I've been traveling. I have things on my iPad or whatever. And yep. so I'm just been catching up on stuff. So, cool. um, you know, go, go to my letterbox or whatever. But those are my highlights. Glass Onion on Netflix. Emily the Criminal on Netflix. White Noise coming to Netflix very soon for you, out now for listeners, and also Bones and All, which I think is on VOD. But, you know, just find that those are my highlights. They're not necessarily for everyone. Bones and All is a very intense, slow, graphic movie, but, man, I loved it. So, shout out to that. No, those are good recs. I like that. That was a nice list. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, before we get to the Fast and Furious trailer to watch number six, we got an email from Alex Ellenin, subject line, Fast Six. This is a nice transition into the trailer. Just come in, I guess? Or did you save it? Yes, it just came in 20 minutes ago. No, just while we were recording. Cool. Uh, he says, Rita Ora's line, don't bite the bait. It's probably just bad writing. Don't bite the bait doesn't really make sense in the scene. I think it's more of Dom as in Letty is bait, and that's distracting from Shaw's larger plan. Even at the end of that sequence, Dom follows Letty and is then confronted by Owen Shaw, who has a sniper on Dom. 
Dom just also has a sniper, Hobbs, on Shaw. So it could even be to the audience to warn us that things aren't what they seem, like Riley. Which I think is a good reading, but again, how does Rita Ora, as this sort of random person, know anything about what's going on? True. That's the, yes. I think that you're right. I think that it is the writing for the audience, and I think that Joey is also very correct that, like, Rita Ora in no way should know any of this, what's happening behind the no. scenes. Unless, as we posited on an episode, maybe she's God. Maybe she is, you know, God incarnate as the race starter. This is London, baby, and she's I know everything about all of you. Yeah, oh yes, that was what it was, the aura cult. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. But yes, thank you, Alex, for writing in. That doesn't really clear things up, but I like, maybe, it's just like, yeah, once again, the movie's not written well. Fun movies, yeah. good movies, just not written well. So It happens. Yeah. yeah. All right, speaking of Fast and Furious 6, Joe, let's watch this trailer for Fast and Furious 6. It is Fast and Furious 6 official trailer. Three minutes and 21 seconds. I'm sure that there's going to be junk at the end that we can cut off, but Rotten Tomatoes trailers, not class trailers, just trailers, because posted nine years ago, official trailer number one, Vin Diesel movie HD. Let me know when you're ready to play. I'm ready whenever you are, bud. All right, and I hope my computer can handle this. Three, two, one, play. These, we're getting to the trailers that we've probably seen before. Yes. Yes. And, like, modern trailers where, like, it's, it's you know, the type of trailer you see before any movie, right? Like, this is an action movie coming out soon. Yep. It wasn't that hard to find you, Toretto. <sighs> Selling the rock real early. Perfect. Yep. Last week, yep. a team of highly coordinated drivers took down an entire military convoy. You know, I know that we're early in the trailer, but this is kind of like a slower-ish build. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like super high-octane, high-energy. It's like, this is like them just talking. It's kind of slow-burning, and I kind of like it. It's funny you're saying that because we just watch a car flip over, and then machine I know, I know, guns, I know. and you're like, it's like a really tame Fast and the Furious. Mm -hmm. okay, it so might just be that there's no, like, hip-hop in the tree. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to smell baby oil. You keep running your pie hole, you're gonna oh. smell ass kicking. You got the best crew in the world standing right in front of you. This shirt always looks so goofy on Dom. It just doesn't look like it fits. Like kind of a golf shirt. Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, unrelated to that, I'm wondering, so like, as we're counting down the days to the Fast X trailer, like, if this was the trailer we got, like, this would be exciting. I'm offering you a chance to yeah. Like, I'm trying to think about this as a new thing, like, not, like, selling the movie that we know, but, like, if we don't know the movie, if we've been waiting years for this thing, or, you know, months at least, or whatever, right? Like, would this get us hyped? And I think the answer oh, for this yeah. one is yes. For sure. And then you're like, okay, we got the classic stuff coming, like, here, butts and cars. We got the Aura Colt right there. Yep. I've never seen this before. Because this sets up, Letty is back. Hobbs is back. The Rock is here. Yeah. The gang is all here. Yeah. You believe in ghosts? Uh, Ghost yeah. And girl. then we, it's like not only a picture, we get like a shot that she's in it, in it. Yeah. You don't think you're back on that. And I am so excited for the Fast Time trailer. Like, watching this trailer for a movie that we've seen and talked about 12, 12 times or whatever, like. This is getting me really excited, even more so for the trailer, for the new trailer. I think so too. Tank drives out of the truck. They got a tank. Yep. Okay. Damn. The music Damn. hitting with the beats of the thing is really yep. nice. Yep. See, but like, you see, like this is what I mean. Like the trailer is building. Like now it's more like energetic. I think it's just the music that they're using to score it. Yep. World's longest runway. Yeah, and like you have no idea the extent to which this all happens. Oh no, and this oh, we're, yeah. we're past three minutes. Like this is a this is a long ass, full ass trailer. Oh yeah, it is. Plane crashes. We're getting all the set pieces. Dawn that, drives that through is it. Spoilery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, cool. Okay. Cool. Into it. Good trailer. Yeah, that's a pretty decent one for like an action movie that you're psyched on. Yes. yes. Yep, I agree. Okay. The final thing to do before we wrap up, close up shop for this episode and come back next week for Tokyo Drift is the Too Fast, Too Furious Minute, Minute 80 
two different titles. I don't really love either. One's kind of funny, like we talked, we teased before. Either the Hold Steady, which is banned because they, they, they will get there, or Doxing Elon's Jet will also get there. Knowing that you title them the title of the minute, I like Docking yeah. Elon's Jet way more. As Brian, Roman, Enrique, and Roberto drive down the road, a helicopter flies low in front of them to get into place to fire an ESD. One is fired, hitting Brian's car on the driver's side. Brian and Roman swerve on the highway, causing pursuing police to crash into one another. Brian's car begins to slow and shut down in spite of an unstable ESD connection. Brian forces Fabio to grab the wheel as Brian reaches out his window to remove the ESD as the minute and I, I was thinking about this as I was writing this description that, like, listening to this minute, I feel like might be a very difficult thing to picture. Like, you know, like, they're on the highway, but, like, it's a lot of, like, whoa, what's that? What was that? Yeah. What's going I on? I can't drive. What no, hell? hold the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, like, I don't know what I'm picturing here. So um, I tried to be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more thorough in that overview because, like, it's a very it's a much more so visual action minute that is... I think memorable, but not necessarily like the most memorable thing in the in the movie, right? So, yep, agreed. The only other thing I want to point out because I don't have a lot here that I found of note in this minute, but you know, Elon in the last few weeks banned Elon's jet from Twitter, brought it back yes. now the twenty four hour delay because he's like put me and my family at risk. People don't need to know where I am. It's like, dude, that's all public record. But we have, as you've tracked in past minutes, just you know, prompted in this minute, uh, we have the call sign. Of the you know the number of the helicopter, we can dock the helicopter pilot, Joe. We know where he is. We know when he is. We can just track that guy down. So let's dock him. I agree. And as usual, I did look up the tail number and found the um, aircraft. And as I hinted way earlier in the beginning of the show, I found something cool about that. Okay, the aircraft. The helicopter is N166BH, so I have, like, you know, what kind of helicopter, whatever, like that. Yep. Uh, guess where it is currently owned and stationed, my friend? I would guess, based on the one thing you said, I'll say that for later, is it near where you are currently, with your Rachel's parents? Yes, it's in Delaware. So, uh, very, very the helicopter, cool. we could go, we could go probably rent it, take a little ride on it. Um, and it was uh, owned by Biscayne Helicopters in Miami, Florida, previously, like up until 2006. So, yes, it's this helicopter. Wild. I'm taking a yeah, okay, wild cool. guess. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's weird how, like, a number that no one pays mind to while they're watching the movie, because why would you? And you're like, oh, here's the ownership history. Here's where it is currently. I can go touch it. I think that that's really cool. I um, actually really like, like, when we do minutes... Um, I really like looking up the tail, like the plane numbers, because like they can't hide or change those. We talk about like what a movie phone number is always like five five five, but like the ones that are like on a building behind them, yeah, are usually like for the business. Like we've you've heard it, we've called them, and like tail numbers give me the same kind of excitement because I'm like, oh, like we will d definitively know like this is what this is, and if I can read the number, then like there's records of what it is because like you said. It's just public record, right? It has to. So. And it's probably illegal to tamper with that or change that, right? Like, you can put dummy plates on a car while you're, like, on a closed set somewhere, right? But, like, yes. it's probably, like, against federal aviation law to, like, change yep. the call sign yep. of, of a helicopter. Because, like, they're like, oh, no, that, that's, that helicopter's supposed to be there. It's like, well, that, that number is not in our system. It's like, well, uh, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, it's wild. It is. It's really, really cool. 
we see Brian's screen die when he gets shot with the ESPD. Mm -hmm. um, ESP. But we also yep. mm -hmm. see another shot of the dash. And um, I went back and checked. Previously, we had seen it. The odometer's still at 209. We talked about, you know, how they, like, got, like, new Evos for the movie, whatever. But the trip mileage is now 3.7 up from 3.5. So this was shot Ooh. later, and they drove 0.2 miles in the car since. I like that they have a trip odometer. Like, why, what do you, what do you, what do you trip it? Like, I know, who uses that, like, other than, like, for, you know, if you're, if you're trying to like get, re yeah, exactly. If you're if you're getting re reimbursed right by the government or by whoever, like, is Brian like, hey, Carter Road, I I had to fill up this tank. Uh, I need you to reimburse me for this gas. Yeah, in the in the movie start like part, this makes no sense. But in like, they got this car from Mitsubishi. How many miles did they put on it? How many miles have we been driving? It makes sure. tons yeah. of sense for like the hero yeah. car to be like, okay, like. Okay, we you know we told them we wouldn't go over like fifty <laughs> miles. It's it's been however many, so yeah, right, cool. Like I think it's funny. Like you, I don't know if you know this, but like in the Matrix Reloaded, at the end of there's that like that highway, the freeway chase where like Trinity's on the motorcycle and like the agents are pursuing her. Like the Wachowskis and that whole set, like or the crew, like built that set in the middle of like, I think the Australian desert. Like they just built like two miles of freeway, so they just like drove up and down whatever. So it's like it's funny that like this is you know it's a real. Florida highway, but like it would, it would be, it would make sense to me if they have a mileage cap. Like, okay, we got to track, we got to make sure that we we don't go too far up and down. We got to get this in the first couple of tries because like we 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 are contractually bound to not overdrive this this Evo or the Spider or whatever. Yeah, I think I think so, but I also think it's cool that like hilarity in the other way is that. We now have seen the odometer. Brian's driven for like three days in this car and it's gone 0.2 miles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the odometer hasn't mm -hmm. changed, but like, why would they even try to fix this in editing? It's a split second flash of the odometer. The only people that will ever catch this is us going minute by minute, second by second and recording yeah, like, it. I, I, I... To I don't want to like you know we 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 dunk on these movies for like not doing details right, but like this is not a detail that they need to get right. Like this, no. nobody nobody needs to notice this. But we here at Too Fast Too Forever are like, uh, no, you did this wrong. Please pay more attention to the little things. Yeah, because like he he travels down the highway more than like point two miles is nothing, right? So right, yeah. yeah just Especially funny. doing like eighty miles an hour, it's like yes, you know, yeah. <laughs> Five or six seconds, right? So, yeah, I mean, maybe not that, but, but it's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, no, well, it, it, like forty seconds, forty, maybe, fifty seconds, yeah. right? Yeah. Anything else you notice in this minute? No, but um, I do have some ideas for a question because right before we came on, Joey said he didn't have ideas for a question, so I have some options for you, and I would like to present them to you whenever you're ready. Please hit us. I also changed officially the minute title to "Doxing Elon's Helicopter," so Perfect. nice combination of the two. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Well, so what are your options for the trivia question? Um, first one, and I think that this was my favorite of the options. I, ha was... I have okay. I, I have one. I have one in mind that I don't know if it's good or not, but I think it's the best option I had. So I'm, I'm curious to see if one of your options is this one. But please go ahead. I was going to say, what is the device called by the movie that is shot into Brian's car? We know that it's an ESD. We talked about it. It shows it on the screen. I was thinking ESD. EMP, ESP, EXP, you know what I sure. mean? Like okay. You do okay. yep. a bunch of iterations of that. And, like, you know, we have, we, we give the answer in a previous minute title, but it's not in this minute title, right? So, like. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, exactly. That's we talked question. about okay. aerial ESDs beforehand. So, yes. So, also, yeah, big clue. So, like, as tough as that is, it's not because, you know, not the worst. My other one, which I think you can logic out and is from the movie and just visual, is which door does the ESD hit on Brian's car? Oh, okay, okay. So you got four options. It's the driver's side rear, or like the hood, you know what I mean? Like, Because you like remember him trying to get out to get it, but like where, right? Um, and it's very definitively like the driver's side rear. And the last one, which I think is the easiest version, and you can go kind of two ways with this. It's like, whose car gets hit, or do both cars get hit with an ESD? 
and it's no. Okay, experience. the one I was thinking, the one I was thinking was also it's not it's none of those. It also is ESD related. It was going to be like which prong has an unstable connection, which would be prong three. I think of the four though of mine and the three that you said, I like your first one the best. What is the name of the device that the police helicopter fires into Bryant's car? The answer is ESD. Fair. I think that's good because it's also it's kind of if you're paying attention to the quiz, it's a give me it's a give me answer. Um, but it's also not a super gimme answer. When it's, it's not like the answer is not in this minute title, just the previous minute title. So this should be one that you don't get wrong, dear, dear listener. And we shouldn't get wrong either. See, I'm going to remember like mentally for me, I'm going to remember like, it's not ESP, it's not EXP. And I remember it wasn't an EMP, which is what I thought it was. So like, what's the weird out of these ones comes down to EMD, yep. ESD. That's what I would be thinking. So little Fair. yeah look so into my mind. minute minute 80 doxing elon's helicopter what is the name of the device the police helicopter fires into brian's car the answer is esd cool perfect um joe that's the end of the episode is there anything else that you want to say anything else you want to mention before we come back next week yeah if you guys are are not grinches unlike me i hope you had a very nice holiday season so also, Happy New Year. This is our first episode in 2023 for the main feed, so Happy New Year. Yeah, we'll report back on um, the CNN broadcast in next episode. Yep. So our next episode is Tokyo Drift with Ms. Montez. Uh, we are doing that next week. The week after that, we have the Iron Giant, our next pit stop. Have you seen the Iron Giant? Do you know the Iron Giant? Oh, I think maybe when I was very, very small, but not okay. any time of, of remembrance. But I okay. had it on. Well, I think I had it on VHS. Very soon. Okay, it came out in '99, so that's probably that's the end of VHS era. But very possible. Maybe uh, then. Maybe I'm not remember. Then maybe I'm remembering a different movie. People love this movie, though. This is a beloved. This might be like, like the the global like the movie that people love of Vin Diesel the most might be this movie. Like this is a okay. this is a beloved movie. Okay. Um, and then the other bonus episode for the Patreon, if you want to join us, too fast, too between now and the next minute. We talked about it last time, too, but Ralph breaks the internet. Wreck it, Ralph, too. Ralph breaks oh, yeah. the internet. We got Gal Gadot in there. We yep. got Vin yep. Diesel, I think, as Groot in some form. So yep. check out too fast, too forever.com for that. We also did a bonus episode of Super Fast, which is out now, Alex Elliman's patron pick. So go check that out. We actually yeah. had a much more thoughtful conversation about that movie than i thought we ever imagined we would yeah yeah so go check that out we have, we're up to 29 ralph breaks will be our 30th bonus episode on the patreon so those episodes will never be out from behind the paywall so if you want those too fast you ever we also did a bonus episode on both feeds of christmas chronicles with chris podcast so i hope you enjoyed that you know yes. Ruffalo Santa. But yeah, that's about it for all things Too Fast, Too Forever. You go to cageclub.me, facebook.com, slash Too Fast, Too Forever, or at Too Fast, Too Forever on Twitter and Instagram. Email us, family at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at Too Fast, Too Forever.com and our store over at T Public. And come back next week for Tokyo Drift. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe, too. And we will tell you all about it when we see you.